Okay, guys, so um, here is the Kalai Smordansky uh, theorem. Um, it's basically from their 1975 paper. It says it's a, a characterization pro, uh, theorem, like the uh, Nash's uh, theorem we spoke earlier. A bargaining rule satisfying optimality, symmetry, scale invariance, and individual monotonicity uh, has to be the Kalai-Smordensky rule. And this is an if and only if statement. That means if uh, a rule satisfies those four properties, well, then it must be Kalai-Smordensky. It can't be anything else. And, there, and also Kalai-Smordensky rule satisfy those four properties. Okay, so Remember that Nash was saying, if you're looking for predoptimality, symmetry, scale invariance, and IIA, well, then you have to use Nash bargaining rule. Here, however, what's different, we don't have IIA. Instead, we have individual monotonicity. So if you don't like IIA, if you think it is too strong, you can use individual monotonicity, all right? So it's a new rule. Uh, with those four rules, uh, there's only one uh, bargaining rule that you should be using, and it's the kalai smordensky rule. Well, um, why we get rid of um, uh, uh, independence of irrelevant alternatives? Well, because it does not care about uh, players' aspiration points. All right. So, however, the individual monotonicity is a new axiom which sort of takes into consideration how much players care about their maximum payoff that they can actually attain in this bargaining problem. So, how do we define individual monotonicity? A rule, a bargaining rule F, satisfies individual monotonicity if for any two bargaining problem with a joint or the same uh, disagreement point, so S, D, and T, D, and for any individual in, in, in my set of uh, negotiators. So I have an if-then statement. If this part is true, all right, what is this part? If S is a subset of T, so T is a larger bargaining problem, in a sense, than S. Or, I mean, T has a, a lot more possible alternatives than S. So in that sense, it's larger. And aspiration point of all the players in these two bargaining problems are the same for every other players except I. Well, then player I's uh, sort of outcome from this bargaining problem S must be the same as his outcome from the bargaining problem T. Okay, so what, what does that say? Well, it says the following. Look, if I have two different bargaining problem, S and T, T is a larger one. Uh, so the larger one should probably mean, you know, some players have a larger aspiration. Well, the thing is, if S, a T is larger than S, but all the players except player I has exactly the same aspiration. I'm sorry, this should be equal. This should be less than or equal. Yeah. If everybody's aspiration points are the same, well then uh, player I should be getting no less. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not equal. It should be getting in this new bargaining problem no less payoff than the previous bargaining problem. Well, why so? Remember, T is a, a so geometrically, this is like T, and this is what S is. All right. Well, okay. Let's suppose this is S. So player I is in this case player one. And player two has exactly the same aspiration point. Well, because T is a larger set, it means some of the players have a higher aspiration uh, in the bargaining problem T, right? I mean, otherwise, why would T be a larger set than S? So some players. So here, let's suppose player AI has a larger aspiration point and player two or everybody else has exactly the same aspiration point. So, I mean, uh, for, player I, for, for, for all the players other than player I, they are kind of don't care about uh, bargaining problem T and S when it comes to their aspiration points. 
All right. However, player I sort of gets more excited about game T because his aspiration point is bigger in that uh, problem. So therefore, he should be getting something more. Well, what if, however, we have something like this? This is S, this is T. Well, in this case, this property doesn't say anything. Well, why is that? Okay, I think it is important to underline why this uh, rule doesn't say anything about cases like this. Well, because um, we don't need to impose this condition on games or sort of situations like this because it is kind of obvious intuitively that here in this new game uh, bargaining problem T, both players should be getting more payoff. I mean, there's no need to impose, uh, you know, the, the, this restriction uh, with an assumption or with an axiom. It makes the axiom stronger. Uh, we don't want to make our assumptions too strong. We want to keep our assumptions as weak as possible. All right. And so, I mean, given that we have very weak assumptions, uh, we would like to get a characterization. So if you have a very strong uh, assumption, like player one is always going to get, uh, player one and player two are always going to get half and half, right? This is a very strong assumption. So obviously the characterization result is going to be simple. Well, there's only one rule that is going to give you, uh, you know, satisfy this axiom, which is always give the half and half. All right. Well, however, we would like to make the assumptions weaker, axioms weaker, and then make the characterization. So it speaks, so this property speaks only for that sort of uh, situations. It doesn't say anything about uh, anything uh, about these situations, but it doesn't mean that players are not going to get higher payoff in T uh, in comparison to S. They will probably get. It's just this axiom doesn't say, or just, just being neutral about those situations. Okay?